I also know, want to acknowledge uh, Sister Joan Carter Conway, and we thank thank her for her. She represents our community as well. We're so thankful for her support and her presence here today. We want to make sure our center was also a part of this. And thank you so much for your presence. So we want to keep the lines of communication open in terms of development. And if it's financial interest that's going to be the, the chief criteria for development, of course you can understand that our church being right next to Belvedere Square, a major financial district, then if the city sees more money, then we're in a position as a church where it's already stacked against us in that sense. And so we need to make sure our lines of communication align with this church and this community. It's stacked more against you than you think. It probably because, is. Because, I mean, we talked a little bit about this at, 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 at our smaller meeting. When the city sells property to a church or another nonprofit, that property comes off the tax rolls. And that means the city will never again get property taxes on that property as long as it continues to be owned by a tax-exempt entity. If you are competing against a for-profit business for a piece of property, then not only is your bid, your bid, not only is your bid compared in terms of they, you bid a hundred thousand, they bid a hundred thousand, but the city knows that forever, if the city sells it to the for-profit company the city will continue to get property taxes on it forever and if it sells it to a church or a school or some other nonprofit it comes off the tax rolls and the only money that the city will ever get for that property is what it's getting in the initial purchase that sounds good but all of us are members of the church members of the community we pay taxes ourselves to the sure, city sure so I and that's usually the case that gets made back I mean, and, this is, yeah. and the we also need to know, we live in Baltimore, so we know that developers are given tax breaks to build in this city as well. Exactly. And so if you make that argument, let's make the full argument, that the city will give a break to a, a big time developer and give away land, pennies on the dollar. So the whole argument about taxes, let's, let's, let's keep the full picture in mind. Sure. We, we know how things go in Baltimore City in terms of development. So if that's your only argument, we can point to places around Baltimore where the city said, that's okay, they don't have to pay taxes. And you can go to the papers and you can see that I serve on the Tax and Finance Committee with Councilman Stokes. He's the chair, I'm the vice chair, okay? And we have both been very clear and on the record that we're not happy with the fact that downtown development gets all of these all the pilots right. and TIF right. deals. Right. But you, this is a wonderful segue because we have in the room the person that Councilman Stokes and I have realized we need to talk to. Mm. Because what we found out when we dug into the pilots and the TIFs mm -hmm. was that the state authorizing legislation that gives the city the ability to grant pilots and TIFs in the first place it came from the state. comes from the state it and, it has, the home and it has a minimum threshold that the project has to be at least this big in order to qualify. You can't get the city is not empowered by the state to give a pilot or a TIF on a development deal smaller than $20 million. Now, how many $20 million projects are going on up here? The only one that's gone on in North Baltimore in the last 10 years that I could track down was Belvedere Square, and it has a TIF. But what we need, and Senator, this is a little ahead of Carl and I were going to come to you guys separately, but um, we wanted to talk to the General Assembly about either lowering the threshold or creating some type of waiver process so that the city had the ability to grant pilots and TIFs for smaller community development projects elsewhere in the city. Because I, I, at the risk of speaking for Councilman Stokes, we both agree that there's too much focus on giving these pilots and tips to downtown development. His focus has been, I think it may be evolving, his focus has been on stopping the pilots and the tips to the downtown development. My focus has been, I just like some of the same deals up here in our communities. I want that same incentive for development up here available to anybody who's doing 
a smaller development project. I mean, this building we're in right now was a three million dollar development project. The, when the when the junior league knocked down the old Wise Penny and rebuilt this with this upstairs, it didn't qualify for any type of TIF or pilot from the city. Senator Conway was very generous with providing some state bond bills to help make this building a reality, but the city literally couldn't give anything because we don't have the power to make these kind of community-based development projects easy. Um, so yes, there is both sides to that. Um, I'm, as I said then, I am perfectly happy to continue to work with the church and with the community and with the businesses on this. The only thing I would not commit to, and I will continue to not to commit to this, is I will not commit to steering the property to one entity that wants it when there's going to be an open and transparent process for how it gets awarded. And I hope you respect that. And that's all I can ask. Yes, my name. I wanted to know, does, does the rest of the community know what you're going through now and trying to find out what to do? Because the, your church has been a part of our community. And it's very well respected and loved. And I think you could get, I don't know if people would have other ideas for you or donations for you or whatever, mm -hmm. but it's it's a church that we want to please. <laughs> They've been pleasing us for a long I was, time. To follow on that, I was going to ask if it would help in that transparent process to have the buy-in of other community associations. Does mm -hmm. that way... That's a good question. I don't know whether or not, uh, from the housing department's perspective, oh, excuse me a second. Uh, 